Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back and welcome back to an all new episode of Shopping My Stash for dupes for new makeup releases. I still have not found a better name for this series yet, but I'm excited to bring an all new episode to this series if you are new to this. Basically what I do is I shop through my stash to find dupes for new makeup releases. So I kind of came to the conclusion that so many releases were starting to feel so redundant and they were so repetitive to what I already had in my collection and it just made sense for me to look through what I had and decide hey you know I can pick through this this and this palette and essentially create this brand new palette so that's kind of where this series stems from I want these to be a way not only for myself to kind of evaluate what I have before buying new purchases but I think it's a good reminder that a lot of times we already own these products and we don't own them, but we have them somewhere in our collection already. So I'm not trying to discourage you and say, hey, you can't buy any of these new releases. You are allowed to buy whatever you want. If you own every single shade in a palette that's coming out, but it's still going to inspire you, it's still going to bring you joy, you are completely free to buy it. I am not here to tell you anything. I'm not here to tell you anything else. But if you're new to my channel, I upload four days a week, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But for now, let's go ahead and hop into the video. So the first product is a stack from Melt Cosmetics, and I will say that's a brand that's always intrigued me. I would like to purchase from Melt at one point, but this stack in particular isn't one that I'm planning on picking up, and it's the Baby Girl stack. Now, I get that this stack is not like your typical warm neutral palette. Well, this isn't a palette, but you know. It it's kind of a little bit brighter, a little bit more corally. And I've looked at a lot of photos of this and in some it pulls a little bit more coral and in some it pulls a little bit more orange. So I did pull some palettes to represent both. Now when I look at some swatches that are a little bit more orange, it kind of makes me think of the ColourPop Yes Please palette. Now I don't think these are exact dupes and I definitely see that there are colors that aren't going to be found in Yes Please. But um, in some of the photos, like I said, I do feel like it pulls a little bit more of a coral color. So I was like, what do I have that's really corally? And I grabbed this single from ColourPop. It is the shade Making Moves. Now, I don't think this is an exact dupe to any of the colors in the Rust stack, or no, not the Rust stack, the Melt stack. But I felt like a lot of times when you start blending eyeshadows out and you're working with a lot of other colors that are similar to what's in this palette, a lot of times the looks tend to be the same. Even if the eyeshadows swatch a little bit differently, they blend out the same on the eyes. So I feel like I could get a similar look with maybe the Yes Please palette and that single from ColourPop. Next I want to talk about the new Violet Boss Like a Boss palette and if he... This, I don't know, all the Violet Boss palettes really look the same to me, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, kind of like the Laura Lee Violet Boss palette. I own this, and I'm trying to pan it right now, so this just made sense for me to pull out. I think they're so similar. Um, I don't know, the thing about the Violet Boss palettes, they have so many shades in them, it's so hard for them to, I feel like once you buy one or two of their palettes, you don't need any more because there's so many shades in it, they just start to get very redundant. So I feel like those are similar. The one color that I felt uh, kind of stood out, when you look at the palette, you don't really see this color, but when I saw the swatches, there's a tone that is like an orange, or not orange, a green and gold duochrome, and it reminds me a lot of the single shadow from ColourPop in the shade Sideline, which is my favorite ColourPop single eyeshadow. And I was like, you know what, if I really want to do a look like the Violet Boss palette, and one of the only colors that I don't have is <laughs> that green duochrome. Wait a minute, no, I actually have that in a single shadow. So if you like that palette and that duochrome was really speaking to you, I mean, hey, it's available in a single. And the only one that I feel like I couldn't really dupe from my collection, but probably could be easily duped in a lot of other collections, was the dark blue. Now, <clears throat> It feels to me a lot like subculture. It reminds me a lot of the shades Untamed and Axis. I've untamed all over my lid today, actually. Now, the Violet Voss palette, that color is a shimmer, and these are both mattes, but I thought, you know, if I really needed it to be a shimmer, I could just mix a blue shimmery shade on top of it to create pretty much the same color. So 
that palette I don't plan on picking up. I do feel like I pretty much have all those colors in my collection. Next, let's talk about the new Tarte Mermaid palette. Um, the packaging is pretty. I'm definitely not picking this up though. It's so boring and they had so much potential to create such a beautiful purple green blue palette and I'm like screaming for those tones like that's what I want to wear right now and that's what I'm drawn to in eyeshadow palettes and instead they made a warm neutral palette and put in two or three pops of color. I like for the most part the whole top of the palette is so easy to dupe any warm neutral palette. Um, Tartlet Toasted, um, not the same, this is definitely more orange, but similar colors and once you start blending them out on the eye, similar looks, um, some modern renaissance in there. Honestly, just mix together a few of your warm neutral palettes and you have the top couple rows there. And the only things that I found kind of unique were the bottom three shades. Now the one shade that I really like is that green. In the pan it looks very green but when it's swatched out it's a little more minty and it just to me reminds me a lot of the shade Macaroons from the Juvia's Place Deuce palette which is a favorite of mine and then that blue looks really dark in the pan and then when I saw it swatched it looked a lot lighter and reminded me of Dahlia from the uh, Juvia's Place Masquerade palette and then the only one that was a little bit trickier was that kind of purpley one. But to me, I'm like, you know, that also feels really similar to the shade Glass Bowl. And the swatch of this reminds me a lot of the swatch that I've seen of the color in the Tarte palette. So definitely not something I plan on picking up. I feel like I have these colors already in my collection. So that was another no for me. Next, I wanted to dupe the Kylie Eye of the Storm palette. This palette is not one that I was interested in at all. I did kind of like the Calm Before the Storm palette. I'm not picking up either of them, but I did want to share with you guys how I duped this one because when I saw this, the first thing that I thought of was Urban Decay Troublemaker palette. This, I don't know what the... Oh, I can't talk. The colors in the Kylie palette remind me so much of these bottom two shades right here, Bankroll and After Hours. I feel they fit in so nicely with that Kylie palette. And then you just kind of have, you have that bright yellow, which to me, this isn't the same yellow, but uh, ColourPop Yes Please has a nice yellow in it. Otherwise, they make a single eyeshadow called Tiki, which is yellow. It's not as neon as the one in the Kylie palette, but if you were looking for a single yellow, this is a good option. The only color really in this palette that I couldn't dupe already with stuff in my collection is the silver. And that just makes me think, you know, maybe I go out and buy a silver shade, but I don't necessarily need to go out and buy this entire palette. So that's another one I'm skipping over. And the last one that I wanted to dupe was the Natasha Denona Tropic palette. I do not plan on spending the money for this eyeshadow palette when the top two rows are so easy to dupe. Um, I've seen, okay. In some photos, they look like any warm neutral palette, and I'm like, okay, Modern Renaissance, Charlie Toasted, whatever. But then in other photos, they look really, really light, and it looks like the, just a bunch of transition shades with a few pops of other colors thrown in. So regardless, I know I can go through my warm neutrals collection and handpick every color that is in the top two rows. And for me, the only unique parts about this palette come in the bottom row, and I do like that row. If she would release just that bottom row as one palette, I would be, I would have been a lot more excited. For me, the places that I looked to dupe this, I don't necessarily have exact dupes for these, but the places I looked were the Juice palette, because the silver in that reminds me a lot of the Mont Blanc in the Deuce palette. In the photos of the pans, it doesn't look silver, but in the swatches, it looks silver, so I feel like this would be a good dupe for it. And then the colorful shadows, for me, I feel like I can get a similar look with this top row on the Masquerade palette. They're not the same because there's some mattes in the Natasha Denona palette, and all of these colorful shadows are all shimmer. It just makes me think, hey, instead of buying this very expensive Natasha Denona palette, Maybe I will invest in a few single shadows in matte versions of these shades if that's what I really feel like I need in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if I was low energy, it is because I am sick. But thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!